Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So I've been doing a whole load of testing on the Ranger. It's been getting a lot of updates with module 28. So here I want to cover the best setups you should be using and how well Will Warden compare to Hunter with the next big update, module 28, on April the 23rd. That's less than two weeks away. Should you be changing things up? So again, Ranger has the Hunter path and the Warden path. The Warden Path was significantly underperforming and so got a ton of updates over the past weeks. If you have been following my channel, my videos, you may already know exactly what is changing, but we'll get a more encompassing video when we get, say, the patch notes. But it's still somewhat in a work in progress. But even so, let's compare it versus Hunter. I will go and compare against my tests with Barbarian and Wizard, and you can see there as well. Now, all of my tests are done in the training room here, so we can get a baseline and equal test for all classes, 20k rating, summon an ally for combat advantage, and we summon the boss guy here. We make sure we're fully buffed up, have our well-rested buff as well, and if we are running the perfect weapons like we are in this test, make sure we have those five stacks. Again, this is just all optimal settings. But again, we're doing this for all the classes, so it's fair. The build and other test requirements are as follows. What is very important is to have a three minute plus test. And yes, you can end just after your say fourth artifact call beyond the three minute mark to get the highest DPS. So if you copy all that, you can mirror what I'm doing and potentially see if you can get equal or slightly better than what I am getting. Again, I'm pretty new to Ranger, so my timing might not be super perfect. Now these tests you will have to do on the preview server because we use the buffer artifact and this simulates being in a full party where you have artifact calls and artifact calls are huge. You're gonna deal more than half your overall damage within 10 seconds of an artifact call in end game content. So they are very impactful and you really want to be maximizing your damage within that 10 seconds. And you will really notice the difference between a player who doesn't really know how to play an artifact call and a person who is well practiced at it. It is just a huge amount of damage you get within that. And so you kind of really need this buffer artifact to be able to simulate that. Without it, if you do it, say with a normal artifact, you're going to miss all that and your damage is not going to be representative at all of what you will find in endgame content. So I went and tested out multiple different setups, both on Warden and on Hunter, to see what performed the best. And these are my results. I have a few things to explain, but yeah, the top performing one is on Warden for me. And this, if we take advantage of Seeker's Vengeance, which we cannot in this test, would be nearly 1.4 million DPS. That is very solid compared to the other classes I have tested. And it's also pretty simple to play. And this is the setup you pretty much use. You may see my tests of Hunter. And yeah, the best one I could get was 1.144 million encounter DPS. And this is the Hunter that everybody's been using. You find good hunters out there and this is pretty much the setup they use. But again, you can probably perfect your timing a little bit better than what I did and get a little bit more damage from Hunter. But especially for the average player, it's going to be a lot easier to just go with Warden. One thing to keep in mind is the playstyle is very melee focused. Now the actual damage we got on the test was 1.313 million counter DPS, and that is without Seeker's Vengeance, without the 10% buff. You can see the little note here, exactly the math and how we are equating to 1.383 million encounter DPS. And we have to do that because in a normal fight, you would have this bonus because you would be behind your boss. But unfortunately in this test, if we go behind, behind the dummy, he's just gonna turn and attack us because we have the highest threat on him. I wish they had done something that it couldn't rotate. So I'll just show you the gameplay of that test. You start out with Split the Sky, Thorn Ward, and then you have your artifact and you're using your melee encounters, then your snipe, 
then your mount power, back to your melee encounters, and then some at wills until the artifact call is over, and then switching back to using Split the Sky and Thorn Ward. You are on a focused build, meaning you gain stacks which give you damage based on what stance you're in. So yes, you do want to be in one stance for the most part, but it is worth it to switch to the ranged stance just to cast those ranged abilities to get their damage over time. They have pretty long cast time as well, and you pretty much just need to get used to when to cast those. And basically it's when, when the cloud goes away, you can switch back, use Split the Sky again and Thorn Ward. You might need to use a hindering uh, strike or hindering shot to get the cooldown reduction for the Thorn Ward, but yeah you should be able to just do as I do here. We approach the next artifact call. We use Split the Sky and Thorn Ward, then our artifact, then our melee encounters, then our snipe ability, mount power, melee encounters, some at wills. As soon as the artifact call is over, then you're back and you're gonna use your ranged abilities again as they should be off cooldown with tacticians. All of this, resulted in the most amount of damage that I could possibly deal. And I've done an awful lot of tests, an awful lot of mess ups with my timing, and then an absolute ton of retests again to get this perfect run here, which is near enough perfect. There is still the bit of randomness between crits and not crits that can result in a teeny bit of damage difference. But as long as say your mount power and your daily power is critting all the time, then you shouldn't find too big a difference there. Now, be aware, we are using the snipe daily power instead of, say, the lightning enhanced weapon from your other daily power because it's the big damage hit and in an artifact call that is going to result in far more damage than any other ability. You can check the math for yourself, you can check your own tests, and in general, in single target, the snipe daily power is gonna perform the best. So this test, you can see it all here for yourself and we do pretty well. Our DPS is on the bottom right there next to our damage. We're at that over 200 million damage dealt, 1.24 million DPS. That drops down as you go outside the artifact call, but we're approaching the final artifact call here as we check the timer based on our mount pretty much. When that's on like five seconds, then it's the go ahead for the artifact call. We also want to make sure our daily power is full. So we are just getting to it now. We go cast our artifact, our melee encounters, our snipe, and then our mount power with our melee encounters once more. And that is using tacticians to get that cooldown for the artifact call, which is just a huge bonus. And that results in that log there over 1.3 million encounter DPS. You can see it just here as well, all the hits. And yeah, that's pretty much the best performing setup I found on the new Warden, on Ranger as a whole even, compared to what I could get on Hunter. Using the classic Hunter setup, we were definitely doing a good bit less damage. Now you can choose different setups. Let's say you want a ranged only setup. I would go with Hunter here as that seems to be better than say what the ranged only setup would be on Warden. So you don't really want to play ranged only on a Ranger. You either want to play melee or a mix. Hunter probably has the best mixed one where you make use of quite a lot of good ranged ones along with good melee ones. Warden has a lot better just melee ones and then you're supporting a bit with your ranged ones. They basically just deal damage over time with those abilities, your Thorn Ward with the six hits of 200 magnitude and Split the Sky with five hits of 225 magnitude. Now, if we are to go and compare, say, this DPS versus Wizard and Barbarian, I have done tests on Cleric and I need to do more tests on Rogue, Fighter and the other classes too, and I'll get to that. But I'm happy pretty much with my Wizard's tests and my Barbarian tests. Now, I did change up 
my little test rules for module 28 improving the item level a little bit and running with the celestial combat enchantment just because that's what we'll be getting with the next update so that's why i haven't really tested all the different lower performing setups on say the other classes just yet but we have say the best one tested and we got like 1.37 million encounter dps on wizards just there and for barbarian 1.386 million encounter dps so very close very close as well to what you'll be seeing on warden here when you can at least take advantage of seeker's vengeance so i'm i'm pretty happy where it's at at least for the average player warden is definitely going to be a lot easier to play than hunter particularly hunter i just find requires a lot better timing you're trying to squeeze in all of these abilities really quickly into an artifact call and it can become very quickly a mess like with this warden it's a bit more chill you're just using split the sky and thorn ward before the artifact call then you're going artifact and then you're just using your melee encounters your mountain daily and your melee encounters again now warden did get a very big buff to say death strikes but i did not find that to perform very well we did a very complex rotation with split the sky thorn ward but then you throw in hindering shot just before you use your melee encounters and you pretty much do that every time to give those melee encounters the big 30 percent buff but it just wasn't worth it compared to just running focused and always having that extra damage buff here more reliable and even though you do switch stance sometimes to go back to your ranged abilities it was still worth it overall so hopefully this is somewhat insightful with regards to ranger i will come out with proper builds for it and kind of how to play it better and potentially some gameplay in future content ultimately it's looking pretty good for ranger warden especially got a lot of improvements and is now going to be fairly easy to play wherein we see a 1.383 million dps versus barbarian 1.386 and wizard 1.37 i will do more tests for the other classes the other damage dealers i'll showcase them in their own videos and the different setups compared and ultimately we will come out with a module 28 damage dealer comparison for single target damage keep in mind practice will play somewhat of a part now i did take a lot of attempts to get all of these results so i'm pretty confident with them but somebody who's played the class for years and years with the same setups at least if the class didn't get a ton of reworks like if you've played before module 16 that doesn't matter at all the game completely changed but nonetheless if you've been playing hunter since it's been in the matter as it stands since it got the aim shot buffs and fixes then you probably are a lot more practiced with that and when you have a lot of practice then things come naturally you have all the muscle memory for the timing and it can be easier for you but again these rankings are where it's at for me with the time i've spent practicing on them and warden definitely came out a lot easier so once again a massive thank you to all of these channel members thank you for watching and we'll see you guys around goodbye for now